Humanity in general tend to make the Senate a bit paranoid, that's true. You see, back when they were discovered during what they call the Antiquity, the higher-ups were startled by their magic. All sentient species, and a lot of non-sentient ones, have magic powers, to some extent. But for most of them, it's limited psychokinesis, telepathy, the odd pyrokinesis, etc. Now I say limited in comparison to humans, because these guys are crazy powerful. So when the fleet observed those primitives, they witnessed things like cleaving a fucking ocean in half to clear a path for his fellows, invoking fire tornadoes, controlling weather on a continental scale, or even raising the dead. Yes, I know that modern technology can resurrect the recently dead with hermetic imprints or whatever, but we're speaking about stage 1.2 primitives there. The most powerful of them were gods for the rest of their species, and a high-level threat for our government. And so they decided to do something about it. Motion was put to vote, and as you know, the enclose their whole system with an anti-magic field won, with kill it with fire, shortly behind. Rumour has it that what tipped the vote was a couple of senators being afraid that the humans might somehow survive an extermination order and seek revenge, but that was thousands of years ago, so nobody can confirm that. Long story short, the field is in place. Biggest anti-magic field in the history of the galaxy. People are sent there to monitor the humans, who end up filing the magical powers of their past into the myth and legends category. They appear to make negligible technological progress in the following centuries, so we kind of forgot about them. Without Magitech, they're stuck in stage one anyway, unable to leave their planet. In the end, there's only one guy left, looking after the bots keeping the field working. And then it happens. Around ten years ago, some faint FTL signatures are detected in a solar system close to the human homeworld. The region being basically empty wilderness, they're ignored. Nobody has the time to deal with the small-scale illegal mining we thought it was, but it grew. Soon, we had no choice but to admit that somebody was setting up a colony there. We investigated and found humans thriving. They managed to reach stage 3 FTL tech without magic. Slow, inefficient, primitive FTL that a broke Grolock wouldn't want for free, but FTL nonetheless. Jaws hit the Senate's floor hard when the news reached it, let me tell you. Even early in Stage 2, humanity had a hunch that magic was a thing. They called it dark matter, dark energy, the missing piece of the puzzle of the universe. They tried to capture it for decades without results, obviously. But now they were outside of the anti-magic field, and magic was everywhere. They were rediscovering their long-lost powers slowly. While the Senate was locked in debates, don't forget that there was other things it had to take care of as well. The Kelfast mineral crisis was in full blow back then, remember. Humans figured that something was blocking dark energy from entering their home system. Quickly enough, they figured out that something was someone. And sure enough, they found the field projectors and captured the technician. What followed was the most tense first contact between the species and the galactic community since the introduction of the Vral, and those were warlike hive minders who had spread to 15 systems and suffered a century of slave arrays before the Senate stepped in. Thanks to the hostage situation, amongst other things, humanity secured a far better deal than most species, including a boatload of tech, Entire libraries worth of scientific knowledge over magic. 30 light years of expansion space. Most species are happy if they got 15, though the isolated location meant it wasn't as valuable politically speaking, and of course, the deactivation of the anti-magic field. Said deactivation is a story of itself. You don't just turn off a system-wide anti-magic field that was running for millennia and expect nothing to happen. I wish there was recordings of the humans' leadership face when their fourth planet, Mars is it, sprung back to life in a matter of weeks. I had one of the Senate when they learned that the planet terraformed itself for free. <laughs> Priceless. And thus, humanity integrated itself into the galaxy, with more or less success. 
The first time a human walked into a bar in the fringe made the front page. Guy was bullied by Tullens. He pulled his gun, so Tullens disarmed him with telekinesis, making a grave mistake, reminding the human that magic was a thing. The resulting fireball killed five people, injured 30 more, and melted $20,000 worth of furniture in the bar, street, and the building on the other side of the street. Humans quickly and strictly forbade magic jewels. We had no such law, and soon learned the errors of our ways when a fight between a human crime lord and a human bounty hunter levelled a city block on Veckel 5. Despite all of this, someone was stupid enough to declare war on them. I don't care if you have the best military this side of Nebula 331, taking on people who are both the best non-magical tech of the entire fucking galaxy and individual magic abilities powerful enough to make the lack of proper magic tech void. It's just plain suicide. Three separate survivors swore they saw the souls of their comrades being sucked out. Stories of impenetrable darkness and undead were common, and a destroyer was taken out by a planet-side projectile which, after inspection, turned out to be a tank. Facing magically superior foes, the Kateras deployed anti-magic en masse. Humans retaliated by doing the same. Sadly, it only meant the humans had to return to conventional fighting, and lost an advantage they never relied on anyway, while their opponents were all but crippled. The most notable effect of this was on the spaceships. Humans had non-magic FTR backups, not the Katurs. The fight between a navy locked at sublight speed and a navy that wasn't went about as well as you'd expect for the first. But here I am, making humans sound like horrifying monsters of death and destruction. They're not like that, not all of them anyway. For each human frying innocence by accident or sadism, there is two using their powers for the good of all. Humans can be an anti-grav crane, a firefighting corvette, and a rescue ship all at once, in a package barely half your size, and more often than not completely free. It's sad that the media and people in general remember the incidents involving lightning storms and soul-tearing living concrete, but not, say, the Ten Mashi Crash, where three human bystanders saved 10,000 lives by diverting the course of a crashing spaceship. All in all, I think we are better off with the humans than without. And no, I'm not saying that because I married one. <laughs> not entirely, anyway. <laughs>